Unexplained mysteries will always be around, no matter how much technology we put into trying to solve these unknown cases. Sometimes getting more information only baffles experts more, making the strange mystery even stranger. Number 5. The Demon Wall is a strange and mysterious piece of art located in an innocuous church in Norway. The highly detailed, eerie artwork was created by Gerard Gotas in the 1940s, but he claimed to have seen lines that were much older than the ones he painted. The village church is a small building, built about 900 years ago and serving the small village in the southern Norwegian county of Telemark. The church is decorated with art from between the 15th and 17th centuries, mostly showing saints and biblical figures. Today, the wall surrounding the arch that leads into the main church looks unfinished. From the ground, it looks like bare stone, with odd line drawings. But taking a ladder and getting closer to the mural, it's clear that there are actually hundreds upon hundreds of tiny detailed figures. The artwork has been described as satanic looking, with faces from 100-legged animals and demonic looking creatures. One of the clearest figures is someone the artist dubbed Beelzebub. It's the haunting face of a bearded man, the eyes wide and staring at nothing while tiny figures make up the lines of his hair and beard. It looks nothing like anything else in the church or anything else created in Europe at the same time. That's because it wasn't created at the same time. Gerard Gotas was a conservator it was his job to take old pieces of art and touch them up or repaint them in the original style to make the artwork look as good as new. The profession of a conservator was relatively new in the 1940s, but Gotas was known to be one of the best and the government asked him to restore the artwork in this church. His investigation began in 1939. There had been an earlier restoration in the 18th century but Gotas claimed that he could see brush strokes of the original artist and was going to try to restore that work. He created this mess of demonic figures based on lines that only he could see. Looking at photos taken by Gotas before his work and comparing them to afterwards, it looks almost as if he was doodling in a coloring book. The original figure looks to be a saint of some kind. And those that have studied the demon wall believe that there were two or three ordinary looking figures before Gotas went to work. The real mystery behind the wall is why. Gotas claimed to see the old line work, but analysis using modern techniques proves that those lines never existed. Gotas's work before and after this piece was completely ordinary. Even during the process of creating the demon wall, he did other perfectly normal conservator work. During the winter months, it was too cold to work, so he worked on other projects that show no sign of the same demonic figures. His son worked with him on the piece, but his work has fewer figures, and it seems clear he was following his father's instructions and couldn't see the lines that older Gotas did. Some have likened the work to artwork created by someone suffering from schizophrenia, but Gotas showed no signs of mental illness. It was as if he had purposefully wanted to trick people into believing this was an authentic piece of art. But if this were true, it would have made more sense to create something that resembled the artwork from that time. As both Gotas and his son have now passed away, and Gotas was a poor record keeper, it's unlikely we'll ever discover what really inspired this mysterious and unexplained piece of art. Number 4. San Bernardino in Colombia is an ordinary looking village nestled in the Andes Mountains with the mysterious tourist attraction that scientists cannot explain. Many of those who pass away and are buried in the village cemetery do not deteriorate. Their bodies are eerily preserved and some even look lifelike despite their owners having lost their lives years earlier. The phenomenon was discovered in the 1960s. In Colombia, it's tradition for the bodies to be buried in above-ground vaults due to how wet the ground is. 
after about five years, the bodies are often then removed due to regulations. In 1957, a flood led to the cemetery being relocated. When it came time to remove the bodies that had been buried at this new location, workers discovered that many of those entombed at the graveyard looked like they had not passed away long ago at all, despite having been lifeless for years. Not only were the bodies in remarkable condition, so were the clothes that they had been buried in. There was no explanation for why this was. Some of the other remains had aged naturally and the clothes that surrounded them had turned to tatters, but many had not. Scientists and mummification experts have tried to explain why this is, but so far, the answer remains a mystery. Natural mummification isn't heard of. Extreme temperatures, dry weather, or low oxygen environments of a bog can lead to mummification, as chemicals cannot get into the soil, but none of these are the situation in San Bernardino. Even though the village is nestled in the mountains, it's only this specific graveyard that has caused the mummification process, and none of the other nearby villages have experienced the same thing. Other explanations include the diet of the people in San Bernardino, which includes local vegetables uncommon to the rest of the world. But this again wouldn't explain why the phenomenon is so localized, or why the clothing has also been preserved. A number of the exhumed bodies now lie in a museum. Strangely, this museum has no climate control and has not added any chemicals or conducted any embalming processes to help preserve the remains. Still, the bodies remain preserved and scientists continue to puzzle over this strange mystery. Number 3 The sinking of the RMS Lusitania is one of the most famous maritime tragedies, but one that is still shrouded in mystery more than 100 years later. The Lusitania was a civilian liner that launched in 1907. It was one of the most luxurious and advanced of its time, and was believed to be too fast for submarines to catch. After briefly being requisitioned by the British Navy at the start of World War I, by 1915 it was back in the hands of a civilian cruise line operator. It made transatlantic passenger journeys from New York to Liverpool. Even though the sea around Britain had been declared a war zone by Germany, it seemed absurd to civilians at the time that the Lusitania would have been in any danger. As well as believing the ship was invulnerable, it was also unheard of for a civilian ship to be targeted. Only two people who were supposed to be on board the ship on May 1, 1915 cancelled their trip. There were 1,959 people on board as the ship crossed the Atlantic Ocean. It was about two hours behind schedule, as it had to wait for passengers from another ship that had been requisitioned by the Navy. But everything else was going to plan as it approached the British Isles. But while near the Irish coast, the Lusitania crossed paths with the U-2, a German submarine patrolling the waters. The submarine commander had actually been considering ending his patrol early due to poor weather. The weather was unexpectedly clearing up, and when he looked up, he saw the Lusitania. The Lusitania was actually too far to catch when he first saw it, but it changed directions to make their paths crossing inevitable. A torpedo was fired at the ship, hitting the starboard side, but German officers watching the ship were surprised at just how destructive the action was. It would turn out there was a second discharge on board the ship. It was this second discharge that caused the Lusitania to sink so rapidly and cost more than 1,000 lives in the process. To this day, the cause of the second discharge remains a mystery. For a long time, the most obvious explanation was that cold water had reached the boiler, which had then erupted. But there were rumors that the British military had been using the ship to carry around ammunition. In the 1970s, the government would admit that this was true and that a large quantity of aluminum powder was on board. This could have also caused a dramatic reaction. While the wreckage of the Lusitania has been found, it's impossible to explore. 
meaning the exact cause of the mysterious second discharge remains unknown. Number 2 For four years, the SS Morro Castle was a luxury ocean liner running trips from New York City to Havana in the 1930s. It was a popular escape from the Prohibition and attracted businessmen and tourists alike. Then, in 1934, a mysterious fire started on board that would take the lives of hundreds of passengers and remained unexplained to this day. The circumstances surrounding the Morro Castle's final hours at sea are extremely controversial. On September 5th, the ship set sail from Havana under the captain Robert Wilmot, who had been in charge on the ship throughout its history. In the early evening, Captain Wilmot had dinner in his quarters. Not long after, he began to complain about stomach problems. Before the end of the night, he had passed away from a heart attack. Just hours later, at 2.50 a.m. the following morning, something caught fire in one of the storage lockers. What caused the fire remains a mystery, but what happened afterward was chaos. The former chief officer, William Worms, had become acting captain, but he was unprepared for the job. He wouldn't leave the bridge and tried to beach the ship, but couldn't. Chief Radio Engineer George White Rogers sent his assistant to get instructions from the captain to send an SOS signal, but when he couldn't get a clear instruction, Rogers sent the signal himself. The fire damaged a transformer on board the ship, cutting much of the electrical equipment off, and only one SOS message was sent out. There had been no fire safety drill aboard the ship. The decks and much of the furniture were covered in highly flammable paint and varnish, and some of the lifeboats couldn't be deployed due to paint on the chains. Only half were deployed, most not full. Many of the crew abandoned ship before the passengers, including passengers who didn't know how to use their life jackets, jumped into the water, unprepared and ready to lose their lives. During the chaos, Rogers helped a number of passengers to safety before leaving the ship himself. He would be hailed as a hero, but as an investigation into the fire took place, he became a prime suspect. Rogers was known as unsettling aboard the ship. He had a criminal history and had been found guilty of arson in the past. He was one of the last people to see Captain Wilmot before his passing and speculation that the captain may have been poisoned continues to this day. His body was lost at some point, likely during the fire, so no tests to determine whether some kind of poison was in his system were ever carried out. After this disaster, Rogers would go on to try to take the life of his boss while working in the radio room at a police department. After being let out of prison to serve in World War II, he took the life of a neighbor who had loaned him money and passed away in prison just three years into a life sentence. Despite circumstantial evidence, there was never anything physical connecting him to possible arson. Many of the documents surrounding the investigation into what really happened on the Morro Castle are still classified. A number of high-ranking crew members and the Ocean Liner's vice president were convicted of criminal negligence. But these charges were later acquitted, and the blame for the disastrous results of the fire fell on Wilmot. However, the real mystery remains how the fire started in the first place, and if it was arson, why? Number 1 The Scandinavian ghost rockets refers to a mysterious, unexplained phenomenon that appeared in the skies over Scandinavia and Finland in 1946. Whether these were meteorites, rockets, or something else entirely is still unknown and likely to remain that way. The first reported sighting of one of these ghost rockets was in Finland in February of 1946. Several citizens saw the rocket-shaped object in the sky in broad daylight. It will be the first of thousands of tubular or spindle-shaped objects seen over Finland, Norway, Denmark, and Sweden over the next year or so. Most of the time they were silent or near silent, though occasionally they would be accompanied by loud booms. Some had tails or streaks of light following behind them, 
They sometimes had visible wings, but often without, and could move faster than a fighter plane, or low and slow. The strangest part of the mystery is that some of the objects were reported as slowing down, speeding up, or even changing direction. While many of the objects could be dismissed as meteorites, there was still a significant number that could not be explained. In Sweden in particular, there was concern that this could have been a weapon launch of some kind by the Soviet Union. This was pretty much the beginning of the Cold War, and it was feared the USSR may have been testing rockets confiscated from Germany at the end of the Second World War. The US was also very interested in this and sent people to help investigate. On a number of occasions, rockets were reported crashing to Earth. One time, this happened only a few meters from sunbathers at a Swedish beach. But every time, there was no debris to record or analyze. Despite this, investigators believed the objects were man-made. The Soviet Union remained the prime suspect of the cause of the mysterious ghost rockets, even though both Swedish and American investigators believed the rockets were technology that no known country had access to. In a top-secret memo from the United States Air Force Europe, the writer notes that they were not inclined to entirely discredit that the objects did not originate from Earth. Even stranger, the objects disappeared almost as soon as they had appeared in the first place. And by the end of 1948, the case was pretty much closed. Then, after the fall of the Soviet Union, it emerged that the testing of German rockets was still in its infancy in 1946. And it wasn't to blame for the rash of sightings. What was to blame for the Scandinavian ghost rockets remains a strange, unknown mystery. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.